Futsal community. Welcome to Futsal and Proud podcast number five. My name is Andre Carr, known on social media as The Doctor, and I'm your host. Uh, the English-speaking Futsal community around the world have been caught by surprise with the announcement of that Westcliff University from Irvine, California, is launching a Futsal program with a full scholarship. So to talk about this announcement, it's a with, it is with a great pleasure to introduce to you all our fifth guest for the for the show, Ivan, or even Ivan, whatever you want to say, Todorovic. Is that correct, Ivan? My name is Todorovic. I'm from Serbia, but uh, obviously I'm pronouncing my name here as Ivan. So you're right. And your last name? Todorovic. To Todorovic. Very good. Freshly announced men's and women's head coach for the program. Ivan, welcome to the podcast and thanks for coming to talk to us about this exciting announcement. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys and uh, talk about futsal. It's a sport that we all love. We love so much and we and we get excited when we hear exciting news. So if anything that uh, makes futsal grow, we get very excited. Ivan, but before we talk about the program, can you share with us a bit of your background, uh, where you were born, where you played, uh, your playing career, your, your coaching career as well? Absolutely. I was born and raised in Serbia, in Eastern Europe, actually born in Yugoslavia at that time. And then the country got uh, uh, in some problems. And uh, obviously, I stayed in my country of Serbia. Uh, I grew up over there in uh, one first division team academy called Chukarički, that is probably right now the third team in the country. And the last two years of my youth, I was picked up by the best club in the country, Red Star Belgrade. I was a national team player, U17. I had a pretty good career ahead of me, but uh, the things didn't go quite the way I wanted. Uh, stayed to play second division for two years over there before I moved to the United States and uh, played in college for four years for Salem International University in West Virginia. Obviously, uh, every summer in Serbia, is a time when the best uh, futsal tournaments were happening over there, so where the best uh, futsal and best outdoor players form the teams. And those are the tournaments when usually the the, the arenas are full. It's a, it's a very intense atmosphere over there. And you, you say summer, they play futsal in summer, not in winter there. Uh, no, they, at that time, those summer tournaments were the, the most popular. Mm -hmm. Back in the days, uh, we were playing 5v5 with a ball size five. And then later on, right before I was uh, about to come to the United States, they started with a serious uh, 4v4 regular futsal that we play today. And uh, that was some time when the, the professional league was kind of starting just the way we're starting here right now. Uh, for, when did you meet uh, coach Dushan? Because Dushan is from, also from Serbia, isn't he? Yes, yes. I met Dushan here in the in the United States prior of uh, his uh, signing with the U.S. Federation. Now, very good, very good. So, futsal it's uh, it's very traditional in Serbia. They got to the round of six. They very hard group in the group stage in the last World Cup. Uh, they played the USA. They played Argentina and, and Iran. But they got through to the round of sixteen. So they lost in the round of sixteen. Uh, what, what's the name of the people from Serbia? A very good target that they have. Peric? Yeah, Peric. He's a really good player. He he, he was he plays for Haligoic, doesn't he? Uh, Serbia has several players that are already playing in the in the in the big leagues. Obviously, getting put in the uh, group with the Argentina, with the Iran, and oh, okay, United States. There was kind of at that moment a team probably that that was not at the level of the other three. But uh, that game against the uh, United States helped Serbia advance in the next round and then got uh, to play against Portugal, which was the world champion. But they had a yeah. pretty good game. And I think they they had a pretty good chance to surprise Portugal that day. My yeah, friend, even against Portugal, they, they had a good game. You're right. Absolutely. Yes, yes. I'm talking the, to, with the co Serbian coach. He's my friend since I was 15 years old. And uh, a lot of times we talked during the, that uh, World Cup and uh, he was really hoping that he can surprise Portugal and everything. And I think they were very close. Pipoca was the assistant coach for the national team, Brazilian uh, 2012 World Cup winner. And as, he was assistant coach in, after the World Cup, he went back to the But anyway, let's get back on track. Let's, uh, let's talk about the Westcliff University. Uh, can, you, can you tell us a bit about the university? Where is it based and where, when was it established? Westcliff University is uh, 
the school that used to be only online school for several years based in Irvine, California, in the heart of uh, Orange County, which is, according to me, probably one of the best, if not the best area in, in the country. Obviously, <laughs> uh, I'm here, so maybe my bias, my, bias. A little bit subjective, but uh, uh, the school, it's a private school. Uh, the school is, uh, the, the school started with the sports 2019 as the big part of the growth and uh, for the marketing purposes and, you know, bringing the students in, uh, we wanted to hit the ground running and we started with only two sports, 2019. Right now we have over 20. And uh, from the very beginning, uh, the head coach that brought me in the men's soccer program that I was his assistant, uh, his idea was uh, to, to start the futsal. And uh, I was asking him, how do you want to start a futsal? Futsal is not uh, the college sport. And he said, doesn't matter. We can have it as an independent sport, which is not going to fall into the many rules that, for example, NCAA and NAIA have for bringing the players for the games. This coach, Joey O'Keefe, that I give a lot of credit for what we're doing right now. He's currently a coach of uh, Bal Biola University, just down the street from us. It's a Division II school out of La Mirada, California. And that is somebody that is going to work very hard to do what we are going to do here with the futsal. So probably it's going to be one of the first schools that uh, we're going to be able to compete with. So that, that was going to be one, one of the questions later on in the, in the show. But you have already mentioned that you have another university hoping to have a futsal program as well. Uh, all right, let's let's talk about the foot. Is it likely to have a futsal league, anytime, university futsal league anytime soon? Uh, I cannot speak on behalf of the of the NAIA or NCAA. So far, some tries the federation had and the national team coach Dushan uh, didn't go so well before. But uh, we were all hoping that once futsal becomes the Olympic sports, that it is going to automatically get a wild card to get into the NCAA or NAIA. But in, in the meantime, we don't want to wait for that. We would like to start first it's a local western division between the colleges in california and hopefully arizona southern california north california and arizona but uh number one thing as coach dushan always says we cannot build the house starting from the roof so the university uh we have to start the, our program first make it really good make a good example and the other people to to follow or, and build on what we are starting here I think that's for the first year, that is our goal to present futsal to the college sports in America for everybody to see and then try to educate the other athletic directors and hopefully coaches to how to, to build it, what resources to use. And hopefully in the second year, my goal is to have a, at least a league of six to, to eight teams. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you. I say if we, if you keep on waiting for people to do things for us for futsal, it's never gonna happen. Someone has to start, like you, like you guys are starting out the futsal program and make it success when people follow. Uh, how is this futsal program gonna work? So, uh, you, how many times a week they train? If are they gonna be playing? You say that they might not have a league in the first year, but what are they gonna be doing? Uh, men's soccer is played in the fall which means August, September, October, November. So since men's soccer and futsal have many similarities and some players like, like me that played men's soccer was also involved in futsal, uh, we didn't want those two sports to collide the competitions. So the idea is for the futsal to be a spring sport. Uh, our futsal team is going to practice in the fall as well and we're going to try to get as many friendly games as we can and the real season even this first year is going to be in the uh, in the fall i'm sorry in the spring and uh, where we're trying to schedule probably 10 to 12 uh, friendly games and those are going to be the other colleges that will probably send us their men's soccer team to play a futsal game against us and obviously mm -hmm. Idea is for us to try to dominate that competition with the players that we're trying to get, not for the result purposes, but for showing uh, how we can play good futsal, organization, and everything that can attract the other colleges to join that train. 
yeah, the pressure will be on you guys. Uh, when we talk about splitting the calendar into two parts, one of the issues we're having here in Australia is that the soccer season is getting longer and longer and there's less time for players that want to play both sports, which in, in a way we've, we have some players that are becoming full-timers, futsal players, and, and, but some players that want to play soccer, they might not be able to play futsal. Do, do you have that issue in the States? Uh, for right now, we don't. But what I'm noticing in the States, there are more and more real futsal academies. So there are players that could manage since they were 12 until they were 18 to constantly play two sports and some of them even uh, left men's soccer and just stayed on futsal. And those are some of the players that we're signing right now because those are the real futsal players. Because for the, for the men's soccer players that just want to transition at the age of 20, 19, 21, uh, I don't think that uh, they would have a quality of a player that, I mean, with obviously the exceptions are always there, but in general, that they cannot have a quality of the futsal player that trained, that knew the movements, that knew the transition, the defense, the offense, the plays. So that is the focus, but I don't exclude the possibility to sign a men's soccer player that has a talent that, that was always uh, being able to maintain playing futsal while he's playing uh, men's soccer. Yeah. Uh, Ivan, how did the university accept you guys to start a futsal program? So what was the, what was the, last, uh, the last thing you guys had to convince the, the university to, to, start a, to give scholarship to students? To be honest, Andre, university was uh, a part of this from the beginning. They are being a huge support to us. And uh, to be honest, with you, I was surprised that I'm going to get so much attention from the university and so much help and funds to to start the program they are seeing a bigger picture as well and they are my my biggest help to be honest with you in anything that i need anything i ask for they were there to accommodate me and uh, i have no excuse not to succeed in this That's great to hear. Project. uh you talk about support you mentioned the, the word support how is the u.s soccer federation supporting you guys uh the head coach dushan yakitsa and his assistant pablo are being as well a huge help they are talking about us everywhere they go they are announcing us on social media uh, i'm getting a lot of phone calls from the people that they were talking to offering me the players i actually visited uh orlando uh, orange soccer academy in orlando uh it's led by the former brazilian uh, a uh, futsal player that was at one moment, I think, golden boot, Andre Passantino. Uh, mm -hmm. I signed five players from his academy. They were youth national champions in the United States, and they also played in the adult league as a youth team. And they, and not the adult league, and the adult uh, national competition, and they lost the quarterfinals, which is a lot of talents over there. And uh, our new signing and under coach Andres son Enzo Pasantino is currently with the U.S. men's national team on the camp. He's coming next week to Portland as well. And uh, coach Dushan counts on him a lot. These players that you signed, when, when is uh, the, the year starting for them? When when are they moving to to your place, to, to your country? They to are city? going to come end of July to Irvine. And very soon, as soon as they come, we're going to start with the trainings. There is a possibility that uh, we might play a couple of games in Asia overseas. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about that right now because it's not confirmed yet, but we have to be ready when if that happens. Now, a scholarship, that's how you guys uh, call the attention of everyone. Um, scholarship is something very valuable in these states, isn't it? How much roughly a full scholarship is worth and in, in, in what it's included? Westlake University uh, offers scholarship. Obviously, people say, do you offer full scholarship? We do, but we cannot go and give 15 full scholarship. At the end of the day, this is a private school, but they understand the value of what we are doing right now. And uh, they are willing to, to help out even more and go out of their way for this uh, program to succeed. Obviously, there is a revenue at the end of the, of the day that has to be made. But uh, the uh, full tuition at University is 16500 for a domestic student 
and 17,500 for international students, which is pretty affordable considering the prices of the universities. And so that's, uh, that's per year, isn't it? That's per year. And uh, the question is, what does it include? It includes tuition. Our university doesn't have dorms. Our players live in the apartments just like any other adult. And to be honest with you, they love it. Uh, I understand there are certain type of players that they want to come and live that student life in the United States, live in the big university on campus, join the fraternities or whatever yeah. they do. Here is a little different, but what I think uh, that helps here is there's a lot of things to do. The beach is very close. So people don't really need to have a campus to be entertained. Uh, the apartments are usually on the share basis and they're paid by players. Th that doesn't go into the scholarship. There are a few exceptions that we can also cover the apartment, but that is very, very limited on every team on the program. On the program. Is offering jobs to some of these players an option as well? Uh, we do have jobs on campus, and uh, usually those are part-time jobs. But yes, our players, I'm going to talk right now about our men's soccer players. The, that, that's the team that exists for the last three years. A lot of them are coaching little kids, uh, doing some private trainings, because here in the United States, uh, being a college player is almost look like you're a professional one level down but a lot of parents want their kids by coached by the 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 college players or obviously professional as well but uh, definitely that's how they can make an, a solid income stable income but not work long hours to be able to be paid like per hour and then mm -hmm. to to generate the the income to pay their apartment and stuff yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. I'll, I'll tell you, Ivan. One of my dreams was to actually go to the to the states and and uh, go to college in the states, but instead I ended up moving to Australia eleven years ago. If this opportunity of futsal was there ten years ago when it was my time to go to uni, I'll definitely have applied. Uh, Ivan, is this scholarship or how do you select the players? Number one, obviously, is the quality. So we're I'm trying to go and see the players in person. And sometimes when the player is texting me or calling me from far away, I'm trying to see first his highlight video, then I'm asking him for the full game. That is one part of, uh, uh, of, the, of the selection. And then since all of our players in all of our sports are the first students and then players, that GPA is uh, something that is really important because uh, at the end of the day, the school is an educational institution that has uh, its uh, average uh, GPA of the whole university. And we don't want to bring the, the players that cannot have at least the minimum of the GPA to, to, to study with us. Uh, since futsal is not going to be an NAIA sport for now, we mm -hmm. probably don't have any uh, uh, requirements for the GP, GPA to play, but we're going to put it just like any other sport. We're not going to make exceptions because we first want to have good students here, not the players that are going to just come to play futsal and forget about the studies and start failing their classes. We want them to graduate. And what's the, what's the GPA, the minimum GPA required, required by you guys at the moment? Re right now we require 3.0. 3.0 and that's out of what five from one to four one to four okay i have uh, no idea if that's a high or low 2.0 is the minimum requirement for the uh for the league to play mm -hmm. but for example if uh, one university tell the students we require 2.0 and up imagine the student that is always around 2.1 2.2 and at one moment of the season, his GPA goes down to one point mm -hmm. something, and you cannot count on him. So we take pride in uh, in our education. Our university is an accredited university, and uh, it's a very good academically. And we want to encourage our players as coaches, because we are part of that education, to maintain 3.0 and above. How many spots for men and women you have for these scholarships and, and for the teams? How many players are you going to have in the, each team? 
we want to have probably 15 players on the first team and 15 players on the second team. We're going to carry two teams. Uh, futsal, Is that for both men and women? Uh, yes. But this year, we only started men. While mm -hmm. we are developing the and playing our first season of men's futsal, we're going to, at the same time, start recruiting the uh, women, uh, players for women's program. We're gonna look. We're gonna start scouting. We're gonna start traveling. We're gonna talk to people. We're gonna try to get as much as information about our players as we can. And probably at the next year, at the same time, we're gonna have another conversation introducing women's soccer at Westgate University. Yeah, we in Australia here we hear that or oh, women's uh, football and women's football is really big here, and I, we hear that women's soccer is really big there in the states. I'm not. You're not gonna have any problems finding players to play football, will you? Uh, yes, women women's soccer here is huge, and United States is a is a world champion. But uh, again, at the other uh, at the other hand, we are looking for futsal players, and there are a lot of academies across the country that is, that have the women's team. Some of them, let's say, the oldest generation is 14, somewhere is 15, somewhere they have 18 and 19. So mm -hmm. the the matter of fact is just to spread the word to find them, and uh, thank God so far. They're finding us as well. So we just have to be very organized, be able to see as many players as we can. And uh, sometimes, you know, you find a good player. Sometimes the finances are the problem. Maybe there is a scholarship involved. Sometimes the, um, the GPA is not good enough. Sometimes the player has different plans. So a lot of mm -hmm. things have to fall in place for us to sign the player we want. Can players from overseas apply for the scholarship? Absolutely. We have a lot of international players. For the matter of fact, in a men's soccer team, probably 85% uh, of the first team out of the 25 players was uh, were the international players that used to play in Bundesliga, yeah. Mexico, uh, Norway, Ireland, England, on the, the very good academies. So the same thing we, we are going to do with futsal. With uh, I know Futsal Day is not a league yet, but with the soccer, is there a number of play international players you're allowed to have? No, no, there's no limit. I can have 15 internationals on the on the men's or women's futsal team. No, very yeah. good. So people, I'm sure you're gonna get lots and lots, lots of emails because um, Ivan, just a little bit of my experience when I was in Dubai, I, I used to get emails and emails of of players. Um, Agents offering players. So uh, one email with 30 players. I'm sure your email now is going to start just booming. Uh, Ivan, talking about the coaches, talking about yourself, uh, who who are the coaches there apart from you? Uh, the, my assistant coach, his name is Alex Filipovic. He's the legend of uh, San Diego soccer. He used to be, back in the days, the legend of the futsal in Serbia. Uh, he's a gentleman that played outdoor and futsal back in Serbia. He's older than me, and uh, he came in the golden era of uh, indoor soccer when San Diego soccers were taking the championship when they had those great, great legendary uh, players. And uh, obviously, he's gonna some he's gonna be somebody that's gonna bring a wealth of experience in starting of what we are doing. And what what are the coaches' uh, development plans you guys have for for your coaches? Well, uh, Coach Dushan is planning to do the clinics for the, the to educate the coaches in the in the entire United States. We are talking probably once or twice a week about this project, and one of the big topics is the coaches' education. And he's willing to to come several times during the year to help us out here, and obviously to educate the coaching staff. So, Dushan is, is Dushan the mentor of the program? Officially not, but he is, of course, because uh, it's in his best interest for this league to start, because this mm -hmm. is going to be probably uh, something that's going to be before the professional league. And we want to build on this and start the professional league one day. So that's what I was going to talk about, Futsal in the States. Uh, where is Futsal at the moment in the States? United States, as you mentioned earlier, uh, qualified in the... CONCACAF uh, competition in Guatemala went all the way to the final. Even uh, four semifinalists were going to qualify for the national uh, for the yeah. World Cup, and uh, 
they went to the to the World Cup and uh, despite some tough loss against Argentina uh, and kind of from against Serbia, uh, they played a great game against Iran. With they the, did. Play, the experience that, that those players had, I think coach did a phenomenal, unbelievable job with them. And everybody who knows about futsal, who knows the relation uh, in between the teams, where the Argentinian players are playing, where Iranian players are playing, where Serbian players are playing, definitely knows how good of a job the coach did. And that was one part of it. Now, what we are trying to do with a lot of camps that he's going to see, uh, to do during the, uh, during the year in the whole United States, educating people, promoting futsal, and probably one of the biggest projects will be the, this university league. And we are putting all our efforts into that and he's very very involved yeah look we hear a lot every couple of years we hear some news coming from the states and then it's gonna happen it doesn't happen and then uh, a few things ended up happening which was one of them was the uh, the return of the national team going to the world cup uh i i had everson on the podcast so ever since the, the pivot for for the national team and they we're just mentioning that how good that game against iran was But um, uh, Ivan, just uh, what would be a five-year if let's say this program is very successful? What would be a five-year goal for this program? Where do you guys see yourself in five years? I see us as a part of the. I'm not going to even say it anymore Western Division, but I'm going to say see us as a part of the league that is going probably have 20 plus teams, and obviously that will all change the moment the NAIA accepts futsal as a sport all across the country. And then I think that would be mission accomplished speaking about this project. The whole idea is for the league to see that and see potential in that, but we cannot do that if we show the league that we have two or three teams. We do have to start from something, but as you mentioned, five years, the idea is to have more than 20 universities competing and maybe to to try to to get into the another other states but for now for next year my focus will be uh southern california north california and arizona we must mention also that it's um, as as much being a part of the olympic games would help would help heaps uh, the the university programs in the states is very unlikely that could happen being uh for futsal to join the university uh, the, the olympic games will do I know, is that, is that still a, uh, a real goal, considering that it's not going to be an Olympic, it's unlikely it will be an Olympic sport? Well, I don't, we don't know that. Futsal, we don't know, correct. Futsal is a, the fastest growing sport in the, United, in, the, in the world right now. And having the European Championship, Southern American Championship, World Cup, uh, I don't see why it wouldn't go to the Olympics. Obviously, there are, some people over there that decide but uh, i think even if that doesn't happen that's why we're starting with this initiative and we're going to start this uh non-official league i mean non naia league obviously mm -hmm. but we're gonna focus only on the universities universities uh gonna be our main focus because of the uh organ uh, organization that they have with all the sports facilities Uh, chances to give scholarships, uh, being attractive for young players because of uh, the educational system. And uh, that's going to be something that uh, is going to probably start uh, making people look at futsal as a potential college sport one day. Uh, I, as I told you, there were some tries with NCAA and I think uh, Coach Dushan tried to to kind of open the eyes of the people and try to get them to to start with the futsal, but it's just for some reason they don't work. Maybe they have their own rules, their own plan, and uh, their own five, 10 year plan. So it just didn't mm -hmm. fit at the moment, but we don't want to stop right there. So we're going to have our independent league. You work, I'm confident it's going to work for you guys. And it's very exciting. It's going to work for you and work for everyone else that won't make futsal a reality in the universities. Uh, Ivan, people that want to gain contact with you and, and uh, offer players or the players themselves want to send them the, the highlights, the, 
CVs? How can they get in contact with you? Uh, they can go to Westcliff University web website. Uh, futsal section is over there. There is my email. Uh, this is my phone number. Obviously, I, I like being contacted uh, uh, on the email first. And uh, I always tell people that uh, they should research a little bit about a university. For example, uh, they can send me an email and say, hey, coach, I'm a futsal player from Brazil. I would like to join your team and everything. And I would like to study kinesiology. At this moment, we don't offer kinesiology. So he didn't even look at our majors. We all, at the moment, we offer business, education, law, IT, and as of this year, we're starting nursing program. University is growing rapidly, and I'm sure they have big plans starting this uh, project of Westcliff University in Southern California. And every year we are growing. We are going to open our branches in Orlando, uh, in Miami, Canada. So uh, even in Asia, in the certain countries, Westcliff is going to have their... Uh, their uh, university and uh, at the end of the day obviously the the main university campus will be here in uh, in southern california where all our sports are so this is something that is growing and uh, the there is no limitation in what we can do so that's why we are very uh, strongly believe that futsal is going to be something that we're going to be able to start and be the first here in the united states for sure you'll be uh Ivan, uh, so I think that that's a wrap for the first time. Let's see. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's watch you guys make this a reality and make this a successful program. Uh, I want to thank you so much for taking your time to share with us a bit of this exciting program. On, on behalf of the whole futsal community, I want to thank you guys and wish you best of luck. Hopefully, this is a success. This is a success. So more universities can follow your footsteps and continue to grow futsal. Andre, thank you so much for, for having me. Definitely love talking to you. And I, I think I can talk the whole day with you about futsal. And if you can. start playing, I would be happy to invite you to, to come visit us and to see some of our games. Oh, come on. I'll, I'll even get a, a five minutes in the training session with you guys. Uh, if we could talk about the topics, we'd stay here talking the whole day. But the, the topic today was the, the university, the futsal program. So we, we focus on that. Thanks, everyone, for listening to your Foots and Proud podcast number five. Stay tuned for the next one. Until then, you can listen to my own podcast, Cara Futsu, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you, sir.